you happen to be in the Pennsylvania State House when the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776, you would have been able to admire an example of this work, Henry Popple's magnificent map of the British Empire in America. The map, one of the largest ever published in the 18th century, depicts the scale of Britain's colonial possessions and ambitions in the New World. Its sheer size, it's almost eight foot by eight foot square, reflects America's seemingly boundless land and infinite opportunities, and would go on to greatly influence the founding fathers, such as John Adams and Benjamin Franklin. Published in 1733, Popple's work was not only the first large-scale map to depict the 13 colonies, but also enumerates the rival colonial possessions of the Dutch, French and Spanish, together with the vast territories of the Native Americans. Although the map is principally intended to provide a clearer understanding of the various rivals' claims, it is unsurprisingly highly partial, with the British possessions often exaggerated and their adversaries traduced. Even the choice of colors used tells a tale of possession, politics, and propaganda. The French territories fare particularly poorly with Louisiana circumscribed to the lower reaches of the delta of the Mississippi River. Their humiliation is reinforced by Popple's choice of the color blue, which becomes easily lost among the sea of green of the Native American territory. In fact, the British had poor knowledge of the terrain to the west of the Mississippi at that time. Not that the viewer would know this from the completely myriad of invented place names and spurious cities dotted around the region. The viewer's eye instead is drawn to the vivid red of British possessions, which dominate almost the entire eastern seaboard, save for Spanish Florida, ready to flood into the verdant territories of the Native Americans to their west. Popple even goes so far as to ambitiously suggest a fit place for an English factory on the banks of the Ohio. British dominance is reinforced by a dramatic vignette in the Gulf of Mexico, depicting a naval victory over Spain, once the dominant European power in the Americas, whose treasure fleet could be seen navigating the Caribbean waters, carrying the silver and gold that made Spain rich and colonists seek their fortune in the New World. This hapless treasure fleet is depicted making its way to a massively oversized Bahamas, where unofficial British state-sponsored pirates lay in wait to take their bounty. One British colonist was a young Benjamin Franklin, who ordered the map at least three times between 1746 and 1752, including the example that hung in the State House during the signing of the Declaration of Independence. John Adams, one of the signatories that day, was so impressed by the map that he mentions it in a letter to his wife Abigail on August the 13th, 1776. It's the largest I ever saw and the most distinct. Not very accurate. It is eight foot square. Although Adams' observations of the map's accuracy is a valid one, the work's power lays in its visualization of North America's huge potential for expansion and opportunity, an opportunity that the fledgling United States would grab with both hands.